Hello friends, welcome to Codage. Here I am starting new course that is Terraform with AWS. In this series, we will be diving deep into infrastructure as a code using Terraform. We will start with an introduction to Terraform, the first lecture in this exciting series. So let's get started. So what is Terraform? Terraform is an open source infrastructure as a code that is a tool developed by HACPO. It enables user to define, provision, and manage infrastructure resources using configuration language called HACCOP configuration language, which is also called as HCL. Let's understand what is infrastructure. Infrastructure refers to the virtual resources and configurations like servers, networks, storage, and other resources in the cloud or in an on-premise environment. So there are providers like AWS, GCP, and many more which provide an environment for this. What is infrastructure as a code? So infrastructure as a code is a practice of managing and provisioning both cloud and on-premise resources through human readable configuration file. This enables automation, consistency, and scalability in deploying and managing the resources. So Terraform can manage low-level components like compute, storage, and networking resources as well as high-level components like DNS entries and SAS features. So why Terraform? So let's understand the challenges with traditional IT infrastructure. So first challenge is complexity. So managing infrastructure manually or using script can lead to complexity and inconsistency and also prone to human error. Next is a slow provisioning time. So traditional infrastructure provisioning method often involve manual steps and lengthy approval process, resulting in slow deployment time and delay in the project delivery. Next is a lack of version control. So changes made directly to the infrastructure are not track or version, which leads to potential error or difficulties in reproducing environments. Next is a vendor lock-in and limited portability. Using property or cloud-specific solutions can result in vendor lock-in limited flexibility and portability across different environments or cloud providers. Next is a scalability. So scaling infrastructure manually can be challenging, especially in the dynamic or rapid changing environment, leading to inefficiencies and resource underutilization. And last is the inconsistent environment across development, test and production environment. So differences in the configuration between dev, test and prod environments can lead to deployment issues and performance discrepancies. So how Terraform solve these challenges? So first is using infrastructure as a code. So Terraform allow infrastructure to be defined and managed as a code, which enables automation, versioning, and collaboration. Next is the declarative configuration. So Terraform declarative syntax simplifies the infrastructure management by describing desired state of infrastructure rather than specifying the step-by-step -step procedure. Next is a multi-cloud support. So Terraform support provisioning resources across various cloud providers, allowing user to avoid vendor lock-in and promoting portability. Next is a scalability and consistency. So Terraform state management, resource graph, and execution plan ensures consistent and scalable infrastructure provisioning. Next is a track infrastructure. So Terraform generate a plan and prompt you for your approval before modifying your infrastructure. And last is a collaborate. So as configurations are written in the file, so it can be version controlled using version control system, which can be efficiently managed across the team. So now let's understand how does Terraform work. The core Terraform workflow consists of three stages. So first stage is write stage. So you define resources using HCL in the configuration file, which may be across multiple cloud providers and services. For example, you might create a configuration to deploy an application on Amazon EC2 instance in VPC network with security group and load balancer. Okay, next is the plan phase. So in the plan phase, Terraform create an execution plan describing the infrastructure it will create, update and destroy based on the existing infrastructure and your configuration. 
and last stage is apply. So on approval, Terraform perform the proposed operation in the correct order, respecting any resource dependencies. For example, if you update the properties of VPC and change the number of PC2 instance in that VPC, so Terraform will recreate the VPC before scaling the instances. Now let's understand the HashiCorp configuration language. So Terraform uses HashiCorp configuration language for writing the infrastructure configuration. So this is one of the sample configuration for creating Amazon EC2 instance. So HL configurations are built around the block. These blocks define resources, providers, data sources and other elements. Block has a type which is the resource in this example. Each block type defines how many labels must follow the type keyword. So here resource block type expect two labels which are AWS instance and web server. But particular block type may have any number of required labels or it may not require any labels like this in the nested network interface block type. Normally a resource block declares a resource of a specific type with specific local name. So here resource type is AWS instance and this resource type provides two pieces of information. So first part before underscore is the provider that is AWS and part after the underscore is the actual resource type. Next is a resource name. Resource name must be unique within the module because they serve as an identifier for a given resource. Within this block body that is between the curly braces are the arguments for the resource itself. The arguments often depends on the resource type. So in this example, both AMI instance type and network interface are special arguments for the AWS instance resource type. So Terraform relies on plugins called providers to interact with the cloud providers and other APIs. So there are many providers available as shown here. You can refer to the official Terraform documentation for more information on the list of providers. Each provider adds set of resource type that Terraform can manage. So these are the some example of resources with different providers. So every resource type is implemented by provider. Without provider, Terraform can't manage any kind of infrastructure. Each resource type will have number of required and optional argument. For example, for creating S3 bucket, bucket is required argument and tag is optional argument. Okay, so this was just an introduction on the Terraform. In the next lecture, we will install Terraform and create our first resource in the AWS cloud using Terraform. So that's it for this lecture. Thanks for watching the video.